Old Man The old man was hiding behind the wind. It was only when she closed her eyes that she realized he was there. Oh, he said. Oh, like that, soft. She pictured him looking out slightly to see what effect, if any, he was making. She pictured him neglected, having recently lost his wife and not knowing what to do with his time. Oh, he said, the sound longer now, thinning out and slipping under her door. The arbor above her window rustled and something pinged against the glass and fell, sliding down and on to the dirt. Leaves rattled, branches scraped. She turned the light on for a while and read, and he became silent, as though comforted by the presence of another consciousness in the night. Perhaps he was sleeping, his head fallen to his chest, his weight slumped against the wind, suspenders bowing. She pictured him unshaven. Three quarters of an hour passed, and she grew tired, the words on the pages of her book blurring and dancing until she reached again for the light. She lay within the blankets in the heat of her body, imagining the sequence of events in the story she was reading, imagining sunsets and landscapes and train rides through snow, soldiers running and fields of birds rising, imagining boots, swastikas, and rushing rivers as thoughts began to merge into harsh dreams, and she began to be aware of only her interior world self and the envelopment of pillows. Suddenly the old man howled, his voice shooting up, then looping and fragmenting into all directions of the darkness, lashing out against far and heavenly injustices. She lay, jarred awake, as parts of it rushed out over rooftops and through tall trees. The moments following felt to her like breath intake, a regathering of sorrows. She jumped out of bed quickly and stood, and knew that he was waiting for her next move, and she did something in answer to a summons she didn't understand. She walked to the closet and stepped inside allowing herself the privacy to make her selection. The door was left slightly open so that the overhead light lined out into the room, the shadows of her movements visible. Outside, beyond the walls of the house, there was only a stirring, as though leaves were circling. She let what she was wearing fall to the floor, and she slipped into the selection she had made, it was green, deep, dark green, and satin. Its straps were very small, and there was nothing to it except that it was made to slide along the contours of a body. It stopped just at the knees. The shoes she had decided on were platform and suede and very high-heeled. Platformed and suede and very high-heeled and she was admiring the clusters of small metallic pearls holding the centers together. When there was a flash of force against the house, slamming shutters and knocking over terracotta pots, rocking them on the tile of the patio. She strapped the shoes around her ankles and edged her toe just outside the door of the closet, testing the darkness. Something seemed to shift in the weight of the air as though drawing back, a tide lifting against the rocks on one side of an ocean, like sudden air in the lungs. Everything ceased moving. No leaf dropped, no board creaked. She stood full outside the door for a moment, feeling a sense of calm fall over and around her. And then she climbed the stairs and went out onto her balcony to shine in the moonlight and pass the night with the old man.